from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world, from the heart of Europe. The tips of Africa. From the centers of Asia. Central and South America. You're a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Joining us from Miami, Florida, are pastor of Spring Harvest Fellowship in Colorado Springs, Colorado, Pastor Dutch Sheets. Evangelist and international teacher from Colorado Springs, Colorado, Bill Henderson. Author, prophet, and co-founder of Generals of Intercession from Red Rock, Texas, Cindy Jacobs. Pastor of Harvest Cathedral from Huma, Louisiana, Dr. Jules Bouquet. Ministering in music from Windermere, Florida, Dr. Ron Cannoli. And ready to take your calls, our prayer partners from around America. Founder and senior pastor of Master Touch International Church in Orlando, Florida, Dr. Mark Sharona. Welcome. Welcome to sunny Miami, Florida, where the saints are alive and well. Pan the audience and let them see all the Miami crowd that loves Jesus in South Florida. Incredible. Listen, we have one phenomenal night. This season, as we begin to realize that we are living in the days of the fulfillment of the things the prophets have spoken, tonight you're going to hear from some of the most powerful prophetic voices in the land who speak to the nations on an ongoing basis. It's going to be nothing short of supernatural. As we prepare tonight, I want to just invite you to open all the windows of your soul and drink in as much of the heavenly rain as you can handle. God will give you as much as you can handle. And we're living in the time of the latter rain. And God said, ask of me for rain in the time of the latter rain. God wants to pour it out in all its abundance. We are living in a day and in a time when we're going to see the Apostle Paul's hope and revelation from Ephesians that one new man, Jew and Gentile, are going to come together finally and usher in the coming of Jesus. That's where we're living right now. And I'm, I'm delighted tonight. Now, you know tonight we've got an incredible lineup. Dutch Sheets is here. Cindy Jacobs is here. Pastor Jules Bouquet. Bill Henderson is here. Ron Cannoli's here. But we've also got a really special surprise guest. Now, in the book of Corinthians, the Apostle Paul said that God made him a wise master builder. Apostolic ministries are wise master builders. Well, I'm delighted tonight. One of the wisest master builders I know in the body of Christ, who's done more to prepare inroads for the gospel to get to every nation is with it. Would you warmly welcome, no stranger, to TBN, TBN president and founder, Dr. Paul Crouch. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Hello, Mark Sharona. Dr. Mark, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Hello, everybody. I declare. This South Florida bunch is something oh, else. You know, fire. Jan always says, the only place you're going to have real fun is in southern heaven. <laughs> now, I don't know if there's any word on that, but she may be right. I know, I know one thing. This is the wildest, most enthusiastic amen corner I think we have in the whole network. Yeah. Love you. God bless you.
Let me just give you a quick little report. Jan wanted to be here tonight, but um, she just met the Prime Minister, the new Prime Minister of Haiti a few days ago, right here in South Florida, and uh, she asked, you know, besides building the hospital, which she and Franklin Graham are kind of doing together, she says, what, what can we do for Haiti? And the Prime Minister said, you know, we need an ambulance and a fire truck. Mm. She said, really? He said, yes. So you know what? My little sweetheart got on the phone and what Jan wants, Jan gets. And one of the towns, and I wish I, I should find this out, and I will, and on behind the scenes I'll report it, but the city of Hollandale has donated two ambulances wow. to the nation of Haiti. Awesome. <laughs> and she's out there taping a video report with the mayor of the city or the... I don't know, somebody, and she'll, we'll show it on BTS and Praise the Lord as well. So that's where my little sweetheart is today. There's probably also a good, uh, hmm, probably a good wig sale going on somewhere <laughs> that she's out there taking care of. But anyway, she'll have a good report for you, and she said, say hi to everybody tonight. So hi from Jan, okay? God bless you all. Listen, Mark, I, I just got a minute here to, to spend with you. You've got a wonderful, oh, what a lineup you've got tonight. And I'm going to hang out for a little while with you to get some of that rain you're talking about because I can soak up a little bit. Uh, I want you all to continue to pray with me. I was on the phone just a couple hours ago with your friend and mine, Benny Hinn, and all of our friend, right? How many love dear Benny? And uh, he is so excited about this new Arab. The Arabic. Television Arabic language program. channel. We hope to have it on the 15th of October. Awesome. And he's already having This Is Your Day translated into the Arabic language. And we're starting to translate some of these Praise the Lord programs into Arabic language. And uh, we're, we're homing in on the Middle East and North yeah. Africa in Jesus' name big time. Devil look out. Here we come in Jesus' name. Mm. Speaking of the Middle East, so please keep praying for us. As we work hard to send it to our uplink in Madrid, Spain, up to the big Hot Bird 6 satellite, it'll be the sixth network covering all of Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. TBN, Church Channel, JCTV Youth Channel, the Spanish Language Channel, the Italian Language Channel, and now the Arabic Language Channel. Awesome. Six full 24-hour day channels covering all of Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. Hallelujah. Let me just read you one little letter, though. How many, I know many of you have been praying for our soldiers, young men and women, over in the Middle East, over in Iraq and Afghanistan, and really anywhere in the world. Many of our soldiers are, some of them are over in South Korea and Japan and other parts of the world. So, but of course, we, our hearts are heavy because of the dangers in Iraq right now. And I got, you remember I've been asking you to send pictures of your young men and women in the service? And Jan has built several walls. I don't know how many thousand pictures we've got. And Pastor Ed and all of us, we pray every day for those precious young men and women that are in harm's way over in Iraq and other parts of the world. Well, I, and, and, and to my knowledge, not one of those pictures has become a casualty. To my knowledge. Now, if, if I'm wrong, let me know. But I, I don't know it if, if it's so. You haven't heard any yet. No. And I got this letter the other day, and I, I knew it just, it blessed you just as much as it blessed me, from Betty Slough, from New Freeport, Pennsylvania. Betty writes, Dear Mr. Crouch, I sent a soldier's picture to you who is in Iraq. His name is William Connor from Brain, Pennsylvania. Just recently, he was in an incident that could have been fatal. His group was traveling through several towns in Iraq, the beginning town, the people were out cheering the troops as they passed through. By the way, and behind the scenes, have you heard the secular news reporting any of this lately? Mm -hmm. That the Iraqi people are cheering our troops as they pass yeah. through. They're thanking us yeah. for getting rid of Saddam yeah. Hussein and giving them their freedom. Yeah. And we're going to win yeah. over those yeah. terrorists. You yeah. watch in Jesus' name. I bind you Satan in the name of Jesus. 
But she goes on to say that the, the, the people, the Iraqi people were out cheering our troops, American, British, and others, as they passed through. But each town, the crowds seemed to become less and less. Finally, they were attacked. But with the help of the English troops, they survived. At least William survived. A bullet hit his gun. He dropped it, but picked it up and was perfectly all right. No harm came to him. <clears throat> so God has taken care of another one of our brave soldiers. I want to thank you for your bulletin board of pictures. Uh, I also sent a picture of uh, my grandson as well. Thank you again and all of the TBN partners for their prayers. God bless you. Your friend, Betty Schlau from New Freeport, Pennsylvania. Wow. Now, one more quick note, and I'm out of here. This one moved me. Now, let me tell you something. How many, I want to ask a little question here. How many of you in this room are registered to vote? Let me see your hands. Okay, take them down. How many are not registered to vote? You will register. <laughs> I am a German, and you will register, okay? I told him a little story on BTS today. When I was 18 years old, that was back when you had to be 21 before you could vote. And my little sweet mother had never voted for the President of the United States. And I said, Mother, shame on you. I took her by the hand and we went down and I got her registered to vote for my hero, Dwight David Eisenhower, as President of the United States in 1952, okay? And I drove her down to Oman's garage where we cast our votes and she voted for Dwight Eisenhower as the President of the United States. Now, some of you young people, talk to your moms and some of your moms and dads haven't registered. Make them register. Make them do it. Take them by the hand and take them and get them ready. Some of you have to do it 30 days before the right. election, November the 2nd. Right. So you've got time. Now do it in Jesus' name. And I can't tell you how to vote, but the Holy Spirit can. Okay? And, and check the voting records of your candidates for president, you know, Congress, Senate, all the way down to dog catcher. I mean, we want a Christian in this dog catcher. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> do we vote on dog catchers? Sure. I don't know if we do or not. But anyhow, vote your conscience based on the voting records of your candidates at every level of office. Look, if we don't get good people people of faith into office who got nobody to blame but ourselves. Did you know if every Christian would get out and vote, we could sweep this election and put people of faith in every area of our government. But we don't. We stay home and we don't vote. Vote in Jesus name. Now listen, this is from a young man, a young uh, uh, reporter, actually a Christian reporter said, blessings to you all in the name of Jesus. I'm writing this letter. I just returned from Baghdad. And as an embedded Christian reporter with the 1st Cavalry, um, I was sent there by the Lord to see and then come back and report the absolutely fine job our young men and women in uniform are doing there under adverse conditions. Also, I stand without reservation against the prideful elitist lie of the left that we should not be there, and we are morally wrong. We'd be better if Saddam Hussein were back in power, wouldn't we? No. Huh? No. What's wrong with these idiots <laughs> in the <laughs> left-wing media that say we should not be there and kick these devils out? Something's crazy, or else I'm crazy. I don't know what. <laughs> This young man has it right, the elitist lie of the left that we should not be there and are morally wrong. We are blessed to repre re represent by such an outstanding group of young men and women in the military who truly have compassion for the plight that the Iraqi people are in. Also to expose the same plot of the liberal media 
to desecrate our soldiers' work and to defeat President Bush, as was carried out during the days of Vietnam. I stand against this spirit that rejects their efforts and is causing damage to our young people and is actually causing more soldiers to be lost in the bloodshed in that, that the media and the anti-war rhetoric actually incites and gives encouragement to those murdering terrorists. Wow. Now this, this young man's got it right on. I have eyewitness testimony about the good things that our military is helping the Iraqi people to accomplish. They are helping them to rebuild their schools, medical facilities, sewer systems, electrical systems, just to mention some. I have much footage of video shot while I was in Iraq to illustrate the love of the majority of the Iraqis for our soldiers and their efforts. And then he goes on to talk about he's going back in September and uh, he's got a lot of uh, pictures and roll-ins and stuff that I'm going to get from him and I'll show them to you on behind the scenes and even praise the Lord. Uh, he says, I'll be conducting live interviews with military officers and Iraqis. Uh, please pray for us as we go back to Iraq. This is Michael Payne from uh, a very wonderful ministry of journalism, Christian ministry of journalism over in Iraq. So let's pray for this young man. Let's pray for our soldiers, our young men and women over there, and that the glory of God will descend yes. tonight on this yes. place. God bless you. Bless you, Dr. Paul. We love you. Shall we um, pray? Yeah. Go ahead. You got a word? I, well, I, I was just curious. I, how's things going with New York? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Our big high power, full power digital transmitter is on the air. A uh, recent decision of the FCC gave us great encouragement. I got a word just from Mr. Higley, our young man in Dallas, Texas, just a f as we were coming over here just minutes ago. And it looks like the deal is done, and we will be on, before the end of this year, all four of our American networks on the air in the greater New York City area on cable. Awesome. To God be the glory. <laughs> I wish I could tell you some other news about another great city of the United States, but the, uh, the lawyers won't let me talk about it yet. But, but it's coming. It's coming. It's a, <laughs> and it's a biggie, folks. It's, it's a biggie. Coming. It really is. Well, saints, join hands with one another. We're going to agree for, for Michael and for our troops over there. And uh, yes. Father, we thank you for the privilege of living in the land of the brave and the free. We thank you for the greatness of this nation, founded by great men who loved and honored your sovereignty. Restore, O oh God, your glory once again. Overshadow our sons and daughters as they fight bravely on the front there in Iraq and in Afghanistan. And Father, for our sons and daughters all over the world, Father, cover them with your blood, overshadow them, let the angels surround them. Father, drive back the forces of darkness to such a degree that instead of the terrorists doing the terrorizing, the glory of God will terrorize the enemies of the gospel to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you, Dr. Paul. Have a wonderful night. Say thank you to Dr. Paul for stopping by. Well, we're about to hear some great music from a dear friend and one of the greatest psalmists in the body of Christ. I wish I could sing like him, but I buy his records. That's the closest I'm going to get. Would you warmly welcome Ron Cannoli as he sings Blessed Assurance. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. A little bit more monitor on my microphone. Thank you very much. Blessed Assurance, Jesus. Is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I am an heir of salvation, purchased, purchased by God. Born of his spirit, I'm so glad that I'm washed in his blood, perfect submission, 
all is at rest. You see, I and my Savior am happy, happy and blessed. And tonight I'm watching and waiting. Oh, I'm looking above tonight I'm filled with his goodness oh yes and I'm lost lost in his love early tonight Dr. Crouch asked me he said do you know some of those old songs and, 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 and right away, I, I, I told him, I said, yes, I do. I know all those songs my mother used to sing. I had to learn them. I had no choice. Some of you know what I'm talking about, right? Amen. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And, and tonight, as I sing this tonight, this was the first one that came to my mind, but there's so many, many more songs, wonderful songs that are embedded deep into our hearts the wonderful theology of many of the old hymns that we can hang on to and anchor our salvation, anchor our faith in many of these songs. Oh, and hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so glad that this is my story. This is, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Some of you know this, right? If, if you know it, raise your hand. Okay, we're going to take it from the course. Sing with me right there at home. Come on, you know this. Come on. Let's remember what, sing it like your mama used to sing it. Here we go. This is my story. This is my song. Now you didn't sit down at First Baptist when you sang that. Get up. Praising my Savior all, all the day long. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art! How great! How great Thou art! now. How great thou art. How great thou art. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name. Oh, we bless the name tonight, God. Then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Oh, lift your voices tonight, let them know you love it. Then sing my soul.
Yes. Come on, saints, give God another shout in here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are delighted tonight to have with us an incredible servant of God who has been on the forefront and on the cutting edge of what God is saying prophetically to the church. There are often times and seasons when in there is a need for recovery of the testimony of the Lord. And throughout church history, there have been seasons where there's been a need for recovery. And anytime there's a need for recovery, God raises up prophetic voices to usher in a fresh visitation that can bring about God's ultimate purpose. I'm delighted to be sitting next to one of the greatest pastors in America, one of the most powerful prophets in the nation. Would you welcome Pastor Dutch Sheets from Colorado Springs? Bless you, Dutch. Great to see you. When, um, when, we talk, when we talk about what is happening and what needs to happen, you have just spent an entire year, you and Chuck Pierce, traveling the nation. And in every nation, you have released, in every, in every state, you have released something and you've also seen something. Talk to us about it. Well, Lord, yeah, we have. We've been to all 50 states. The Lord spoke to each of us separately just over a year ago. In fact, we were in Washington, D.C., ministering together when the sniper was there. Wow. And the Lord spoke to us <coughs> separately to go to all 50 states together, intercessors, apostolic, prophetic leaders, and to raise up a new level, really, of prayer for uh, breakthrough, for revival. And uh, it was kind of daunting. We just uh, didn't know if the Lord was really saying this or not, because we both already had pretty full schedules. But the more we prayed, the more we talked, we realized the Lord was saying this. So we did. We've, we've just completed it last week, as a matter of fact. We finished it in Philly, and uh, it's been the most amazing year of my life. I, I have more hope for America after doing this because the uh, words that were spoken... Actually, the Lord challenged us, do not go to any state and just draw on what you did in the last state. Mm. Don't, if you go to any state and just give your latest, best message, I'm not going to honor it. You must hear from me for each state. And so we probably preached uh, uh, close to 150 messages. We'd average three sessions per state. Not one message the same. And most of the time we didn't know until we arrived what we would do. Mm -hmm. But it's been, uh, the, the Lord could not have said the things that he did to these states if there was not hope for America. We have to be moving toward an awakening. Yes. Or he couldn't, wouldn't be safe. Exactly. So. What are some of, the, some of the salient things that stick out in your mind that, that you know right now are burning in your spirit relative to what you saw, what you heard? What yeah, you yeah, probably the most amazing service I've ever been in was the meeting we did in Tennessee. Uh, the Lord spoke to him in the airplane. I said, Lord, what do you want to say to Tennessee? And he said, I want you to tell them that this week a curse has been broken off of this state. Wow. And I want you to tell them that instead of the curse now, they're going to receive a blessing. And I said, Lord, you, you have to tell me more than that because I don't want to imply that just because we're here, there's a curse being broken. And I, and I don't want to leave them wondering why. What was it? So I said, Lord, what is this all about? The Lord said to me, tell them that because of broken covenants with the native people, trail of tears started mm -hmm. there, etc., there's been a curse over this state. But also, my word says in Genesis 12, those who bless Israel, I will bless. Amen. Tell them that because they have decided to stand with Israel, mm. I have been able to break that curse off of them and bring a blessing in its place. So, by faith, I got up and I began to preach. I put a message together on that quickly on the airplane. <laughs> and uh, I, I made that announcement, not knowing really what it was about. One of the leaders ran to the platform. He said, uh, just this week, I was in a session on Monday. This happened to be on a, on a Thursday. He said, just this Monday, I was in a session where the lieutenant governor of Tennessee signed a formal declaration that the state of Tennessee would support Israel. Wow. <clears throat> no, wow. And so, you know, I didn't know anything about that. The people there didn't, know, didn't really know it either. It wasn't all that publicized. So, of course, the faith went to another level, and the prophetic anointing that was released suddenly. 
Chuck and I would just flow together many, many, many times while I'd speak. He would run up and begin to prophesy. And I had told some of the other leaders there that night, feel free to do this if you want to. I mean, just if God gives you something, just come up. And Chuck ran up and began to prophesy at that point. And Jim Gall began to prophesy. And Don Fento, who's a, oh, a sure. great lover of Israel, oh, one of the hosts yeah, of men Great of man city. of God. He came up and the meeting just went to another level. And, and of course, then the whole meeting for Tennessee took on the flavor of what curses God was breaking and, and how he was turning that into a blessing. And it was just... It was amazing. It was electrifying. I've never been anything like it. In fact, as these guys would prophesy, they would invariably prophesy my next point. So I'd say, well, okay, let's do the, ne the next point. And, and then I would, somebody else would come up and begin to share and pray and prophesy. And they would, they would end with my next point. So it was fascinating. It was amazing. One of the other interesting meetings that I, I like to talk about on the tail end of that one, because it has to do with the Middle East again, was Michigan. I sat on the plane again. I said, Lord, what are you saying to Michigan? And he said, I want you to tell Michigan that uh, they've lost their voice. It's wow. really only, only one of the very <clears throat> few words that God gave me that were a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. He said, tell them they've lost their voice. Tell them that they gave it away. And I want you to speak on reclaiming your voice. So I said, Lord, give me something else. He wouldn't do it. So I just put together a message as quick as I could. I had about an hour. Put together a word on reclaiming your prophetic voice, being the just reclaiming your destiny, etc. Didn't know what it was about, but at the end of the message, Chuck had been speaking with some of the leaders of the of the area. He came up and he said, "We know when Michigan lost its voice." He said, 20 years ago, the mayor of Detroit gave to Saddam Hussein the key to the city." And, of course, without knowing it, because so many people they just don't understand the principles of, of what's really happening when that sort of thing takes place, had literally given authority to that spirit of Babylon right. to rule in that area. And it wouldn't surprise you to know that that region of Detroit and Dearborn is the highest population of Muslims in America, right there where that key was given. In fact, to find more Muslims anywhere in the world, you have to go to a Muslim nation. That's how yes. many there are right there. Yes. So the Lord said, here's a fascinating thing. I don't know how the Lord can even do some of these things. I, I know how he can do anything, but when he does it through us, I don't know how he does it. That was the very night that our troops had surrounded Baghdad and went in the next day and took the city. So while they were doing it literally in the natural, we were You're taking that spirit. key back in the spirit <laughs> that had been given to him over this nation. Amazing. Awesome. So, of course, the whole conference, the whole for the state of Michigan, took on the flavor then of reestablishing covenant with the Lord, breaking and severing that stronghold of that principality and beginning to align once again. And we just allowed the prophetic to kick in and uh, lead us. How do we do this, Lord? And it was awesome. So it's been, been one series of meetings after another. It's just been amazing what the Lord has done. I want to hear all 50. <laughs> you know, one of the most... We're going to write a book about this. Okay. So, because we want, to, we want to distribute it to all the intercessors. Yeah. So that they can get a summary of what the Lord said to each state. And apostolic prophetic leaders. Sure. So they can help trumpet it. And, because the Lord did give specific words for each state. Probably one of the most interesting words was uh, Alaska. Chuck arrived before I did. And he was in a prayer meeting that afternoon. He always made me go first. I said, Chuck, you go first. And I said, no, I'll get mine while you're up there. <laughs> but, but I arrived just an hour or so before service. We got together for a, a, just a quick uh, bite to eat and, and just sort of talking a little bit. What's the Lord saying to you? What's the, it's just what we always did. What's the Lord saying? So he said, well, I gave a prophetic word in the prayer meeting this afternoon that Alaska is my Alpha and Omega state. And I said what's that? He said, I don't know, but you're supposed to speak on that tonight. <laughs> I said, what do you mean I'm supposed to speak on that? You don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'm up in an hour. He says, well, God will show you. That's what he always said. God will show you. So I began to meditate and just write feverishly what was coming to me during the worship. And one of the, one of the things the Lord began to do was just speak to me through the geography of Alaska. Hmm. If you go westward from the mainland, 
there's an island that's still a part of Alaska that's on the other side of the international date line. So when you cross that line, you're still in Alaska, but you move forward into tomorrow. If you're on the island and you go to the mainland, you cross that and you move forward into yesterday. So the Lord said to me, Alaska is literally a state that has both the alpha and omega of a day in it oh, wow. at the same time. Wow. The beginning and end of a day. So then he said to me, in fact, Alaska has yesterday, today, and tomorrow in it all at once. Because if you're on the mainland over on the island, it's tomorrow. If you're on the island on the mainland, it's yesterday, and wherever you are, it's today. So, so, the, so the Lord... Quantum physics. <laughs> so, so the Lord began to speak to me about his eternal nature. Yeah. And about how he had created this state to represent that. And he began to talk to me about them. And he said this to me. He said, I want you to tell Alaska that I said, move forward into tomorrow. Do not move forward into yesterday. And then he showed us how every time he, he, had, he would take the body of Christ in that state to a point where he was about to move them into the new, an iniquitous cycle would set in, and they would go right back into the old and become an old wineskin. So he said, break that off of them. And of course, when, when, you, when you bring forth a prophetic message, you know how this works, just the spirit of prophecy mm -hmm. comes into you. the room. And, you. and so Chuck ran up and began to prophesy, mm -hmm. and our friend Mary Glacier and others, and God began to prophesy about the destiny of this state and break that thing off of them and release them to begin to move forward into the new and recapture. At one t point in time, Alaska was really on the cutting edge yes. of what God was saying and doing in, in, in America. Yes. And they had sort of lost some of that. But I tell you, the Lord just snapped. He, he, the Lord can break things off of us, off of regions that have been there for decades, years, centuries. He can do it in a day. When he finds the right combination of faith, prophetic anointing to know what he's saying, because you know as well as I do, it's the anointing and it's the word of the Lord that breaks the yoke. When the Lord can get that right combination, faith lifts, and he just, he just uh, t takes it to another level, breaks it loose. And now they're moving forward into their destiny once again and moving into the new, not trapped in the old. We did that everywhere we went. We just said, Lord, uh, we're not going to get up there until you give us the word for this state. Many times Chuck would run up, as I said, during my message and prophesy. I know when we were in Texas, uh, I was up speaking, and I don't really recall what I was saying. But when I would begin to preach under prophetic anointing, his gift of prophecy would just kick in. And we have such a close relationship and we've worked together so much. Cindy and I have done the same thing. who will be on the program in just a, a few minutes, but she's done this before, just right while I'm speaking, get up and begin to prophesy. When I see their eyes and that look, mm -hmm. I know it's coming. And I just defer to that. This is what the scripture says. Sure. You know, if one has a word exactly. where you're speaking, let them do exactly. you know, why, why wait till Why wait till the message is finished when sure. that anointing is lifted? So I said something in Texas. I don't know what it was. But Chuck said, as soon as you said that, the heavens opened. And the Spirit of the Lord caught me up into the heavens and said, go up and say what I tell you and don't think about it. And he said, knew later that he, if he had thought about it, he wouldn't have done it. So he got up. I saw him come and stopped my message, handed him the microphone. He began to prophesy. And he prophesied that Saddam Hussein would be captured within seven days. Wow. He finished the word, turned around at me, he's back to the people, and rolled his eyes like, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> and handed me the microphone. Uh -huh. And walked off like, do something with this. Well, I didn't know what to do. I just, I just I said, let's pray. So I, I began to pray that the witchcraft that was keeping him hidden would be broken. And he would be, he would be found. There was a an officer there in uniform, he came up and he said, a, U, a U.S. military officer, he said, I agree with the prophet and I declare that the strong man will be found. Wow. There was a young man in this meeting that we prayed over who was a part of the 104th Infantry Division. We, we prayed over him, and I think actually Cindy was a part of this. But we prayed over this man and the 104th Infantry Division that they would be anointed to do their job. Jesus. Supernaturally empowered Jesus. by the Lord to do it. 
Three days later, the 104th Infantry yeah. Division pulled Saddam Hussein out of, out of a hole in the ground. <laughs> you know, the, the, thing that, the thing that I think is so important in everything you're saying, how often the church in America has minimized the significance and the power of prophetic acts. Absolutely. And finally, God is going to have a day when prophets right. are going to be honored and respected good, for the reality right. of what we are called to do. That's exactly right. And, um, yeah, I, you know, it says, it says the Lord God has spoken. Who, who, who can prophesy? You, you got me stirred up. I'm in trouble now. I got to be the host. But um, just take a few minutes and just share do what Chuck said. Just open your mouth and just go. <laughs> just God will fill it. But there's, just talk into that camera. Talk to the saints. Talk to the nation. Well, I believe. Uh, thank you, because I love this opportunity. I am encouraged for this nation. I believe we have moved into a window of opportunity. You quoted the verse at the beginning of this program. Ask rain from the Lord at the time of the latter rain. That word time is the... Hebrew word eighth, E-T-H, it's the equivalent of our Greek word kairos. It means ask for rain from the Lord at the opportune time for rain. In other words, when God has created the right atmosphere in the spirit, in the heavenlies, over this nation, over a, a person, over a church, when it's time, when the opportunity is there, you must ask me for this. My major calling from God for America is to call this nation to prayer. I want to say to everyone watching right now, we are in a window of opportunity where if we, if we honor the Lord's word and begin to intercede and ask him, we are moving into a season where God is going to turn this nation. Yeah. We are going to see revival. We are going to see a great awakening. We are not going to lose this opportunity. We are going to see it come to pass. I say pray especially concerning these elections. Pray for God's men and God's men and women in every office to be elected. God hears and honors the prayers of the saints. Pray especially for the young people of America. There is a great awakening. We are just at the threshold of revival in the, among the youth of America. I have seen it. I have seen it in visions. I've seen it in dreams where God's fire is burning on high school campuses, universities, colleges. We are about to see another Jesus movement, but greater yeah. than the Jesus movement. We're going to see harvest like we've never yeah. seen before. And so I Stop say, pray with us. Fast. Do, do what God tells you to do. But by all means, move into a time where we, we, you help us seize this moment. God is going to move. May I pray? That. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, we God. pray for America right now. Lord, we pray that you would blow by the wind of your spirit. Give us an Ezekiel 37. Lord, the dry bones of America can live again. We ask you to blow from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We say they can leave, will live. We say the young people of this nation, they can live again. We say, Lord, the business community can come alive. The marketplace ministries, all that we've been hearing, it's going to happen. Father, I say, awaken this nation. Move in the government of this nation. Lord, you've had me on this tour, shifting this nation back under your government. Finished it in Philadelphia, where, where this government was born, praying for a rebirth, a coming alive of the seeds of your government over America. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, awaken D.C. Let our government leaders call upon you once more. Shift the courts of America. Lord, you've told me you're going to change the judicial system. Lord, I pray that you would turn that court and give us the votes we need to overturn abortion, to overturn gay marriage. Lord, do what, what you need to do. We come against every stronghold. We say this is the hour. You're going to turn this nation back to you. And we are going to see another great awakening oh, in Jesus' name. Glory. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. I, I just, just, thus saith the Lord, how would I liken these times to the days when my servant David came to power? For my ark has been in the house of Dagon. And I have been, as it were, held captive by my enemies. But now watch as the head of Dagon and his arms fall. 
But yes. more importantly, saith the Lord, I am about to come back into the fields of Beth Shemesh, where the faithful remnant have been plowing in the heat and in the dry season. But the ark is coming up the road, yes. and I am going to restore the yes. Davidic glory, and I will give the key of David yes. to this generation, and I will open a door that no man can shut. Yes. Say it, the Spirit of grace. Mark, that's my life verse, Isaiah 22, 22. Really? And Revelation 3, 7. Key of the house of David, open doors, nobody can close and close. That is my life verse. You just prophesied wow. that. My, my, my. You need to come back. I want all 50 states. Let's I know you're going to write the book, but I want, all, I want all 50. Let's Would you it. say thank you to Pastor Dutch Sheets for being with us? Bless you. Ron Canole is going to sing for the Lord is good. Come on, Ron. Amen. this moment to, to reflect upon our lives and take inventory of all of the great things that you've done in our lives, Lord. Lord, I can remember so many times when I'd done everything that I could do, and then you stepped in and you did what needed to be done. You've demonstrated your love. You've demonstrated your power, your authority, and your ability, oh God, on our behalf. And tonight, Lord, just like the just like the soldiers that went before the armies of Jehoshaphat. God, we're singing tonight, yes, you are good and your mercy endures forever. As we look at our obstacles, as we look at our battles, we're reminded that the battles are not ours. The battles are yours, God. And you will not withhold any good thing from those that walk upright before you. Oh, tonight, tonight we lift our hands and we declare the Lordship. We declare your might. We declare your power. We declare your goodness as your goodness, God, that brought, brought us to repentance. Hallelujah. We praise you tonight. Oh, yeah. 
says, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures for mercy endures forever. Listen, if you have never gotten a hold of one of Ron's CDs, you need to get uh, his new CD off of praises. Uh, anyone, actually he's got about eight or nine of them, but just get them all. Just get them all. Just, just get them all. Right, Ron? Ron said amen. Just get them all. <laughs> we are so delighted tonight to have one of the great women of God who moves in the prophetic. I, when I was about three years old, I was at a conference in 1986. And so she doesn't remember me, but, but I was there. Um, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was part of uh, the, the faculty, the Executive College faculty, the International Worship Symposium. And in 1986, we were in, um, in a meeting in Washington, D.C., and my dear friend Jim Gilbert said on a Saturday morning, Mark, we need to go sit in on Cindy Jacobs' session. Uh, he said, now Jim travels all over the world, and we've traveled together, and, and he's got an eye for what God, he says, this woman is going to be used of God mightily. And so I got to meet her. I've never gotten a word from her, but I'm going to interview her anyway. But, but, I, you know, I, but this is one of the most powerful women of God prophetically in the nations. Would you warmly welcome Cindy Jacobs to TV. <laughs> I'm only, I'm only 26 now. Just you know. are? Yeah, so that's why you didn't remember me. I was, that's you know, an amazing thing. It is, just vitamins. It's all the pills <laughs> I take. It's the gospel, actually. Cindy, um, all kidding aside, God has, has given you a grace to spend hours in His presence, to teach the nation and the nations how to pray. And there are some very specific things that you hear ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and we're at a very significant season. I, I want you to just release your heart. Talk to us. Okay, I'll do that. You know, um, there are times when we need a prophet. Mm -hmm. And I believe this nation needs prophets right now, Mark, because, uh, you know, almost everyone I see says, what's going to happen in the elections? You know, what is God going to do? And uh, I, I want to put a few things in perspective, perhaps just a few moments. It's wonderful to follow Dutch. You know, mm -hmm. we tag team so much. He left and I went, oh, you have me all stirred up now, you know. <laughs> just, just that wonderful friendship, yeah. that one-two punch, you know, that comes in the spirit. I want to talk about a couple of subjects. Um, one being the Iraq War. Right now, there's a lot of ambivalence going on in the nation about this situation, but you know, I always say, we need to hear, what has God said about this? You know, what did God say about Iraq? And I have to go into, uh, personally, a time when I was in Norway, and the Lord began to speak to me. In fact, I looked up my Bible, it was 42302, and I wrote Iraq. And God began to speak to me from this passage about Babylon coming down, Jeremiah 50 and 51. And the word the Lord gave me was, I'm going to send the United States into Iraq. This was before the war. And because Saddam is going to do a preemptive attack against Israel to protect Israel, I'm going to take Saddam down and he is going to be brought before a war crimes tribunal. Wow. And he said, now I want you to go call the generals. In fact, this passage, Jeremiah uh, 51, 27 and down, it says, appoint a general against her, against Babylon. So I called our generals from 30 nations around the world. We went to Washington, D.C. We went to the State Department. 
We went to the Capitol for briefings from different leaders, and we began to pray, and we prayed through this whole war before it happened. This was January. The Lord had told me that the war would begin in February. This was, he, this was in April in 2002. He said, by February, the troops will be deployed next year to go to begin the battle, which, which will begin in March. So I already knew what was going to happen, when it was going to happen. Our job was to pray through it. So at these times, you know, we can't second guess. We can't go exactly. back and say, should we or shouldn't have we? Because right. God said to me, the cup of judgment for Saddam is full, and I am going to take him down. And God uses nations to judge other nations. Yes. Of course, if we don't walk in humility and righteousness, he'll take we'll us down too. Church. Yeah, you know, that's the point. Now, so, you know, we have to say, all right, at this point, then, then, then God was in it. I can only say because that's how, what I heard way before the time. And now, where are we now? Well, we are really in the balance as a nation. God gave me a prophetic word mm, at the beginning of this year. It was a time of acceleration of everything. The good was going to accelerate. The bad was going to accelerate. We're going to see this parallel acceleration. And that's where we are right now. And, and either one, you know, we're, we're in this neck-to-neck -neck race right now with this. We know God wins. But, of course, we know that intercession, I'm always going to get back to that, intercession tips the balance. Sure it does. And um, I think it's particularly significant, Mark, that we are here tonight in Miami because I have a word that I want to give to Florida. Can Great. I do that? Yeah. Is this the camera? This yeah. is my camera. Okay. Right there. All right. You know, God's times and his seasons are important, and we know that all the eyes were on Florida in the last election. And the Lord says, my eyes are on Florida right now. Uh -huh. For I am raising up an army of warriors in Florida that I am going to anoint even as a weapon. And you know, Florida looks like a gun. If you look at it, it just looks like a gun. And the Lord says, I am raising up Florida as a weapon to stem the tide of evil and turn the tide of this election. And I want to speak to the Spanish-speaking community, particularly in Florida. The Lord says to you, I am giving you the anointing to overthrow the evil one. I, I have brought you in this place. I have caused you to be Americans and in Americans, whether you're Cuban or Puerto Ricans or, or Dominicans or Salvadorans or whatever you are. And the Lord says, I am giving you a great authority at this moment to begin to turn the tide of the battle. And that means you're going to have to get your churches to pray. You're going you're gonna to begin to fast. You're going to begin to sin. This is a wonderful responsibility. And the second thing I want to say is to the black church of America. The Lord showed me the keys of justice were in the hands of the black church. That God is raising up freedom fighters like Frederick Douglass and Martin Luther King. He's raising intercessors up. Those that will hear the cry of battle for justice. And the Lord says, I'm going to use you, if you will stand and fight, to tip the battle against abortion. To tip this battle, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm going to use the black church. I have raised you up for this moment. And I know that it will be so. I know that it will be so. And, and this, is, this is a moment where you, we have got to hear from God. We have got to hear. I remember the Lord gave me a prophecy several years ago here in Miami about the state of Florida, that Florida would be the first state to put prayer back in school in the name of Jesus. Wow. Wow. Yay! Yeah. Mark, and some people, when I've made comments like that, said, we can't do that. Well, I said, well, why can't we do that? You know, they said, well, it's not fair to some people. I said, oh, you mean God can't be God? You know, uh, what is this? You know, it's not that you force people to pray, 
But the point is, you know, if we really are going to return to our roots, sure. to the faith of our fathers, as it were, then, then that is going to be necessary. And, and I think that even many believers have become so pluralistic in their thinking and their understanding that they think that, that we cannot have times of prayer. Now, I don't know, since you're only 26, Mark, you probably don't remember this, <laughs> but I am going to be 53 this month. Yes, I do accept presents. Okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of the few people I know who throw their own birthday party. Anyway, but uh, <laughs> that's bad. Huh? Actually, I just turned 50 last Oh, 50. Saturday. There you go. Less See, the Saturday. anointing of the prophets here and the truth. Spirit of truth. <laughs> the I The spirit of truth. I don't want to get struck with lightning. <laughs> Yeah, you're coming to the Pentecost time. <laughs> you know, I didn't know at 50 if my life was over, you know, kind of half over. I was really evaluating. But I got that Pentecost thing, and I decided it was just coming on fire. So, All right. You know, that's a good word, isn't it? So, anyway, now I got confused. Where was I with that? Hmm... Well, we were talking about America is pluralistic. Oh, yes, the, thank the you, thank you, thank you. believers are pluralistic. Yes, but, you know, that we have got to know that... God has an attitude about being God. Yes. He's God. Yeah. You know, he makes the rules. He makes the law. And he has a son. His name is Jesus. He's not a way. He's the way. way. That's it. That's it. You know, I, oh, I was going to say this. I, it was an age thing. In, in living memory, which means when I was a little girl, we prayed in school every morning in the yes. name of Jesus. No one complained. We read the Bible Every day, we, we, oh, our, my teacher opened the scripture, and we looked at this word. And so I know that, that we are in a battle to return to the faith of our fathers. It's not that we don't love people. I mean, we should not be people of hate. But uh, so I, I believe it's going to happen with all my heart. The prayer will be put back in school in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you some loaded questions? No, oh, why not? Everybody does. All right. Let's, let's talk a little <laughs> bit about the nature of terrorism, mm, where we are right mm, now. Mm. What God is doing behind the scenes, what you're hearing from the Spirit. You mean as far as having more terrorist attacks? Not necessarily. Well, I mean, if, if you want to go there or, or the outcome, how, how this is all going to play out. Well, you see, you have to understand that we are in a battle for the soul of at least a billion people. People, yes. Okay. The 1040 window. Yeah, no yeah. And the Silk Road, you know, the Marco Polo Road of Commerce. In fact, we've just gone in the air over 74 nations in Russia on the Silk Road. And that's our passion, real passion. The Kazakhstan, you know, Turkmenistan, and the, this area of the world. And um, in, if, if, if we're ever going to see the gospel of Christ propagated, then we're going to have to see something happen, which has already happened, where there's a crack in the door. Iraq was a crack in the door. And that's what the Lord spoke to me before this happened. That God is going to crack open the Middle East. And then there's going to be this ripple effect. But, you know, the, that uh, this is not going to happen without a battle in the heavens. Exactly. Either, you know? And so what you're seeing in the earth is a manifestation exactly. of what's in the heavens. You know, and so, you know, that's kind of where we are right now. So I believe with all my heart that, that it isn't going to stop yet because there's a, there I, is what I call a spirit of jihad. I believe jihad is a demonic power. Yes. And that, and that it rules over many regions. And that's why you see these incredible demonic manifestations we call terrorism. I mean, who, who would do something like blow up the World Trade Center? if it wasn't a principality, right. a high-level spirit. And so, you know, it doesn't mean that every Muslim person is like that. Of course they aren't. I've met some wonderful, wonderful Muslim people. And, uh, but, uh, but, but so I think that this is the battle we're fighting, and we're going to have to fight it till it's turned. What are some of the things the saints can do to be more effective in waging warfare in the spirit? Well, I think that we have got to come to a new level of uh, not only prayer but fasting. The Lord has really been speaking about living a fasted life, mm -hmm. meaning that, you know, uh, uh, almost every day I'm doing some kind of fast. Now, I know that's hardcore, but the thing is, we're going to a higher level of faith, a higher level of the miraculous, 
and, and governmentally everywhere we say. So if we don't get passionate in that, in our, in our prayer and fasting, we're, we're not going to, to go to the place. We want this revival. We want to see uh, the greatest moves of the Holy Spirit we've ever seen. In fact, God has been dealing with me uh, in our move back to Dallas. You know, we moved to Dallas back home to Texas about three weeks ago. And the prophet said, go back to your roots and redig the wells of miracles. Mm. And God is really burdening me. You know, F.F. F. Bosworth, Christ the Healer, sure. Voice of Healing, all these wonderful miracles. Uh, Hagen was healed in McKinney, Texas there. That we were to set aside a time, and we're planning this for the future, where we have 40 days of fire, where we call people from all over the world to pray for miracles, day and night, 24-7. We're going to put up a tent, we're going to cry out to God till he shows up, till he heals the deaf and the blind, and, and uh, put ads and papers in the nation, all over the nation. You know, say, you want a miracle, come. You know, I'm going to put you on the list. I'm going to say, come on, you want to come be part of this, and you want to get in on this. But we're, we're not going to be there without battling for it. Right. You know, one thing I know about the Arab-speaking world, and we have such a passion, I believe in to bring one million Arab souls with me to heaven. All uh, right. You know, when I, when, we're not going to do that without having incredible passion. Because Arab-speaking people are passionate. Yes, they, they are. And what touches them? You know, Benny Hinn, we were talking about this with Benny recently, that, uh, that the miraculous and the prophetic. Yes. You know, that power, they're interested in power. And so even with my own gift, Mark, you know, God has been saying to me, I want you to go to a higher level. Mm-hmm. I, I want you to believe for more accuracy. I, I want you to get up there and take risk. I mean, I, you want names yes, and dates. Exactly. And, you know, so, so I, I have to change me to do that. You know, the psychics are, and the tarot card readers in Europe, they're just taking over these stations. We have got to come out with a sure yes, word. Yes, we do. We have got to come out with a greater word. And so, you know, uh, that's what I, what I feel about that is that, that we're going to have to battle till we're finished and never give up. The other, the other thing I want to say is something that um, Dutch touched on about the youth. Um, God is moving at these universities. I just talked to someone praying at Stanford. I have a friend, Patrick Cartley. Uh, Cartley. Kylie. Kylie. Kylie, Kylie Patrick friend. started. Violet, you know, you know the Rock well. Church. Sure, yeah, you're well. probably all that group. You know, Harvard. They're praying at Harvard. Berkeley. And all. Yeah, everywhere. Berkeley. Yeah, everywhere. There's these fires. You know, and it's going to start burning. This, this nation is going to catch fire for the glory of God. And it's going to happen from our universities. We, sure we know is. that it is. And right now, as we speak, our good friend Lou Engel, who mm-hmm. had the calls, he is in Colorado Springs. And in fact, I just spoke for him a year ago. A year ago. It felt like a year ago. It was a week ago. Uh, and he has youth coming from all over America. He's praying till the elections. It was going to be 50 days. Now it's 120 days. And they're coming, worship teams and worship bands, and these young people are praying day and night. I mean, one time, you know, this was about 11 o'clock at night. We brought a voting booth from Florida, by the way. <laughs> Yay, Florida! Okay, we brought a, a voting booth, and these kids began to weep and say, God, one million voters from our university campuses! You know, and they're just crying out for that. And so we're going we're gonna to see this, and um, God is going to move. He is going to move. God is going to move. Take a few more moments and just look in that camera. Just release your heart. I, I want to say a couple of things to you. Maybe you have turned on the television set, and you are hungry for God. Maybe you don't know God, but you are so hungry for Him. I want to say to you that right now, through your television set, the power of God is touching you. You're beginning, some of you maybe feel weepy. You, 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 you don't know what it is. You're thinking, well, this is so weird. No, it's God. And what is happening right now is God is saying, I want you for my child. And I want you to do this. I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want you to say this prayer after me. And when I do, you're going to have the greatest miracle anyone's going to ever have. You're going to get born again. Your sins will be forgiven. You're going to be changed. So say this right now. Just say, Dear God, I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Forgive my sins. I am a sinner. Thank you, God. You prayed that prayer. 
and you are now a child of God bound for heaven. God bless you. <laughs> Would you say thank you to Cindy for stopping by here at TBN Miami? Ron Canoli is going to sing from Isaiah 6, I See the Lord. Thanks, Cindy.
today and forevermore. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the Alpha. He's the minister of our faith. He reigns. 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 Hands of the Father, you reign, oh Lord. You reign in our hearts. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forever, oh, forevermore. Oh, lift your hands and bless them for me. You reign, oh Lord. You reign, oh Lord. Forever and ever. We bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you. Incredible. Beloved, you know, the presence of God is so powerfully real at this moment. If you need to be healed in your body, right where you are. Just lay hands on your own heart. Let Papa God just overshadow you right now. You need to be healed in any level, emotionally, psychologically. The healing grace of Christ comes to you at this very moment. Let that glory overshadow you like a canopy. And let the healing virtue of Christ rise from within you. Just yield and bless what the Holy Spirit is doing. You don't have to understand it to experience it. Just trust Him and yield to it at this moment. If you need prayer, our prayer lines are open. Our prayer partners are standing by. If you have never met Jesus, there is no more appropriate time than this present moment. Call that number on the screen. Someone's waiting to minister to you right where you are. As we honor the very powerful presence of God. This has been a prophetic flow all night. I'm delighted to be seated next to a powerful man of God, powerful preacher and pastor, Pastor's Harvest Cathedral in Houma, Louisiana. And uh, he is uh, the brother-in-law of the funny man who has that incredible silver hair that once in a while sings like Louis Armstrong, Jesse Duplantis. But he's a great man of God in his own right. Would you warmly welcome Dr. Jules Bouquet here to TBN. Thank you, Dr. Jules. We're glad you're here. Nice being here with you. I have heard so many great things about your ministry. One of our members came down with Bill Henderson over the 4th of July. And uh, anytime he comes, goes with Bill, he always comes home beaten up and bloodied, but having a great time in Jesus. But you, God has given you a real grace based on your history, having been an atheist, having had a dramatic conversion, uh, you were born in the power of God. You were released in the power of God. I mean, everything about your life has been supernatural. So talk to us a little bit, based on that, what you're hearing God saying and what's going on right now in the body of Christ. Well, first of all, I really sense a, a strong prophetic anointing right now. And God called me, like he called Jonah. You know, he pulled Jonah out of the belly of a great fish, just threw him up onto the shore and really came basically coming out of the world, out of a life of disobedience into a, a walk of obedience to reach the world. I feel like God called me out of a, a dark place. You know, I was an atheist for 10 years, didn't believe in God, didn't believe in anything. And when God saved me, it was supernatural from the very beginning. I mean, I could tell you stories of, of supernatural miracles that took place that night. 
But I, I want to go beyond that and say, you know, that was many years ago, 1979, when that took place. And one of the things that God dealt with me on was learning to hear his voice. And what the Lord was share, sharing with me tonight as I was listening to Dutch Sheets and, and Cindy Jacobs, um, is that God is telling me that there's a lot of noise in the world. Hmm. And there's noise from four different places, from trials, from temptations, from tribulations, and tests. In other words, we're in the middle of a test, we're in the midst of a trial, we're in the midst of a temptation, we're in the midst of tribulations, and all of that is so noisy we fail to hear what the Lord is saying. And the Lord spoke to me at the end of last year, and he said, this is a year that we're entering into a season, a new season, and it's a season of the open door. And in the scriptures in Revelation chapter 4, the apostle Paul is caught up in the spirit, and it, and it says that, he heard this voice and said, come up here and I will show you things which much, must take place after this. And so here was an apostle, but he's writing a prophetic book. So it refers to the apostolic and the prophetic. And God is calling the apostolic and prophetic ministries to come up here. Stop listening to the noise. Stop listening to the noise of the trials, tribulations, temptations. You know, even apostles and prophets are tempted. Sure. They go through trials. They sure. go through tri tribulations. Uh, they go through testings. And we really need to get back to where we really hear God's voice. Because God wants us to come up here so he can show us things that are to come. And I believe the apostolic and the prophetic right now needs to be speaking things that are not known. Yes. That we don't know. The Lord gave me a, a message recently, and the message was this, that we many times become prisoner of the known. We operate in what we know. And God's trying to get us to stop operating in what we know and get to the place of coming up here and operating in the things that God will show us to, that things are to come in the unknown. And so we're, many times we're prisoners of the known and we operate in what we know and, we, and we, we're like in a corral, you know, we just go in that circle and God's saying it's time to break loose, come out of that corral, come out of the known. But what stops us from getting into the known is two things. First of all, we're afraid to operate beyond what we know. But secondly, we're not hearing the voice that's saying, come up here, and I'm going to show you things you don't know. And the scripture says, immediately, I was, I was in, in the spirit. spirit. And I believe that's what God is calling us to. And so when I got saved many years ago, God called me to a long period of time where I spent hours and hours just learning to hear the voice of God accurately. And I believe that's what God is saying today, that we need to really hear the voice of God accurately. Not pretense, not play, but really hearing what God has for us, a revelation. I heard you backstage before you were talking about the Urim and the Thummim. You know, that was uh, on the, uh, the priest's garment, and they had this little pouch, and they, they think it was some stones, but it's inside the, uh, in this pouch next to the high priest's heart. And really to hear the voice of God is to really hear God from the heart. And the word uh, Urim uh, means lights, and Thummim means perfections. And so it's lights and perfections, meaning that we need to get the judgment of God or the, or the wisdom of God to know the perfect knowledge, lights and perfections, the perfect knowledge of God in our day and for what we're getting ready to get into. And when the Lord began to deal with me, and tonight he began to speak to me, that lights really refers to the prophetic, and perfections really refers to the apostolic. The apostolic needs to rise up right now and mentor and impart into the new ministers that are coming up, into the new ministries, to have that perfected knowledge of where God is bringing the church. And that's what we need right now. And so supernaturally, when I'm listening to all that was going on tonight, I feel like God's getting ready to do that. It's a new day where the door is open, and he's saying, come up here, and I will show you things you don't know about things that are to come so that his prophetic gifts and apostolic gifts can work together to raise up a new generation that's walking in the perfect knowledge of God. Powerful. And the, the amazing thing is that there was no way to get to that open door because John was on the earth. It was in heaven. There was no ladder, no stairway. Right. But once he was in the spirit, he was there. Immediately. And he knew. I was there. And you know, when you know that you're there, there then the fear goes. Yeah. You know, the fear is gone where you know this is what the Lord's saying. And that's what God did with me many years ago. He wanted me to get to a place where I could hear from him in such a way that I knew that I knew that I knew. And, then, and I believe that's what God wants to do with the apostolic and prophetic ministries in America today. I believe there are many prophets and apostles going through temptations, 
trials, tests, and tribulations. I define tribulations as when you're going through the tests, trials, and temptations all at the same time. <laughs> and I mean, it's just like wipes you out <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and takes your strength away. And I really believe what God wants to do is in this hour, with all the noise, you turn on television, you know, the news, it's just so much noise going on. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. Well, let's see what God says is going to happen and begin to proclaim it because God's looking for a door himself to come into because we go through his door, but the open doors, as we open our hearts, the glory comes in and the glory goes out. Yeah. And as we release what, what he says into our hearts, we release it into the earth so that it shall come to pass. And I believe God wants things to come to pass that cannot come to pass unless the apostolic and prophetic begins to operate in lights and perfections. Talk a little bit about, uh, when we talk about apostolic and prophetic ministry, you know, we're living in one of those days when there is so much controversy around using the term apostle mm -hmm. and using the term prophet. Some of the greatest Pentecostal denominations have voted not to use the terms. Right. Um, and maybe part of that is because of the abuse. And yet at the same time, how do we preserve the, the distinctives that make for ascension ministry mm -hmm. if we don't talk about this stuff? Yeah. And what are, what are the distinctives of apostolic and prophetic ministry? You know, when I think about apostolic, I mean, we could get into a lot of definitions and a lot of things that, that draw out the fullness of it. But if, if I could just do it in one word, I think about, of it like a father. Yes. So it's a generation of people that have gotten the experience. They've been through the trials, tests, temptations, and tribulations, made it through, held on to God, God held on to them. And from their experience, they begin to father the next generation. So it's not a bad word, no. apostle, because somebody needs to impart to the new ministers and to the body of Christ. When I, was, when I first got saved, I had very few people. I really didn't have anybody mm -hmm. taking me by the hand and mentoring me. I had to learn it by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. mentoring me. And sometimes I did good, sometimes I didn't. Sometimes I needed help and I turned around. There was nobody there to help. But, you know, God was always there. But how much better is if God could take the, the, the fathers for the next generation. And so the word apostle, to me, I start thinking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. You know, the one father to the son to the next son. And so apostolic, to me, is not a scary word. Right. It's a necessary sure word. It is. And really, when, when denominations and all turn away from the apostolic, they're just saying, then we don't need fathers to help mentor the next generation. Exactly. And God's really put it in my heart to be a generational Christian. Uh, I really believe in generational Christianity. Right when I first got saved, God says, look, what I want you to start thinking about is the next generation and the generation after them, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because you don't want to just raise up the children, you want to raise up the grandchildren. And the success of your ministry is that you're still a voice to the grandchildren as you're raising up the children. And so that, that push comes out and it launches them into a realm that they would not have been able to get in except there be the apostolic. You know, Paul, Paul writes to the Corinthian church. He says, you've had many tutors in Christ, not many fathers. Right. At some level, you've got to wonder, was Paul saying it shouldn't be this way? Mm -hmm. And there are many of us around? Or, or there aren't that many, and you need to find out who they are. We live in a day when, if we look at the past three generations, while there have been great voices that have been risen up, when those great voices have passed off the scene, you know, somebody's laid claim to their mantle, mm -hmm. and yet how many have really spent the time thinking about how do I reproduce myself in the right. next generation? You know, instead of trying to claim a, a title, like I'm the next guy, I think you just operate where you are. Exactly. Whatever realm of influence God gives you, that's the realm that you need to, to mentor. And what do you do for a lot of the young men and women who are crying out for fathers, and then they go to every single conference trying mm -hmm. to grab onto the coattails of somebody that right. they think is um, going to give them something. You know, I did that. You know, I was always looking for a father. It seems like no one wanted me. <laughs> you know, it's like I was always going somewhere, and then I realized that what, it, that's not the way it works. I mean, it, you, you can't go and make ap the apostolic something that's um, used commercially. Exactly. It's not something you can reproduce like in a business. It's relationship. And, it's, it's, and it really has to do with a lot with purity of heart. And, and when you find a person that is a pure heart, God has a tendency to join you with that person and you begin to serve the person. And you serve them not from a perspective of, of uh, um, just trying to, to get ahead, but you serve from the perspective of, you know, I want to learn what you know and the, and the apostolic says, I want to give you, I want to pass down 
what I know before I leave the planet. Sure. And I want to help you oversee you in your use of those gifts and, and those tools so that where you don't have to make the mistakes that I made. When, when we talk about the prophetic now and hearing what we've never heard before, Right. Give me an example of God putting you out there in the, mm -hmm. in the high-risk zone and hearing what you've never heard before. 1986, I'd been a pastor two years. I'd been a Christian just a few years. And uh, it was a major transformation when God said, hey, I'm calling you to be a pastor. First of all, I didn't want to be a pastor. Uh -huh. I didn't really like pastors. I understand. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and so God called me to be a pastor, and he had to really deal with me. And so finally I gave up my law practice, went into the ministry, and then about two years later, he said, I, he, I started having a desire to pray. And I, and I would pray all the time, but pray for the people that were in communist countries. And these people, I, I just began to get visions of individuals that were in prison, or maybe their children were being taken away from them, or maybe they were being tortured. And I, would, I just started interceding more and more and more. And then one day, after several months, I started interceding for the nation of Romania, who had... Uh, Ceausescu was the yes. one in power. He was the worst of all the yes. worst communists. His only friend was the Ayatollah Khomeini, right. so you can imagine. And so I started praying and interceding every day. And one day I heard, I, I started praying, God, send somebody, send somebody, send somebody over there. And the Lord one day spoke to me. He says, I'm going to send you. <laughs> and I said, wow. I said, uh, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm hearing the voice yeah, of God here. Here am I. Send Aaron. You know. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do this on a whim or because yeah. I'm emotional, because I've been praying. Sure. I didn't even know where Romania was at that time. <laughs> and, uh, and so I said, well, and, and I, so I, said, well I, don't, I don't want to act on that. So I, but every day in prayer, he said, I'm sending you, I'm sending you, I'm sending you. So finally I came to a point, I said, okay, God, listen, I don't mind obeying you, but I want to make sure it is you. Sure. And if it is you, then I'm going to ask you to do three things. And it just popped out of my head to say it this way. First of all, send me a Romanian. If you'll send me a Romanian, then I'll go. I was pretty confident that it would have to be God because I knew no one from Romania. I said, second of all, that Romanian has to be a pastor or a preacher. And I said, if you'll send me a Romanian preacher, then I'll go to Romania. But the Romanian preacher has to have a pipeline ministry and come to me and say, I want to bring you behind the Iron Curtain. I have a pipeline ministry to get you into Romania to preach the gospel. I said, if you do that, I'll go. So I felt pretty relieved, so I kept praying for him, send somebody. Five minutes later. And so, you know, like a week later, I'm in my office, and I got an envelope. And as I picked up my envelope, and I was reading my mail, and I, it was a closed envelope, the Lord said, this is what you've been waiting for. And I'm thinking, what have I been waiting for? I opened it up, and it was a letter from a Romanian preacher inviting me to go behind the Iron Curtain, that he had established a pipeline, cur a pipeline ministry uh -huh. to go behind the Iron Curtain. And he wanted me to go. <laughs> it was supernatural. He did not know me. I did not know him. So I went behind the Iron Curtain, and the Lord told me, I said, okay, why am I going? He says, I want you to prophesy. I want you to release a prophetic word wherever you are accepted to be preached. And I preached underground churches. They also had licensed churches, and they had unlicensed churches. I, everywhere I preached, I preached that God was going to tear down the Iron Curtain in Romania. Mm. Now, they didn't want me to say the word communist because they were all afraid they would get persecuted. So what I did say, I said, God is getting ready to, to tear down atheism. I used that word. And I knew what an atheist was since I had been one, so I use it as part of a testimony. I said, but God is going to tear down the power of the atheism that's over this uh, country. He sent me here to tell you this, and I'm proclaiming it to you. And if you believe and receive it, it shall come to pass. Wow. And within a short time, it was impossible, for those that remember the history, it was impossible because in 21 million people in Romania, 750,000 were secret police. And they were everywhere. I'm listening, they chased me. They, pull us over with machine guns. There was all kinds of things that happened on that trip. It was like secret agent man running all over the country. But you know what? When I, when I finished that 18-day tour of Romania, I talked to the man that brought me in. I said, did they believe? He said, well, the older people can't believe. He said, but the younger people believe what you're saying, mm, and they've received it, my, and within a my. short time, <laughs> communism fell. So I really believe, I really believe in our day, what is the new Iron Curtain? Iron Curtain's gone. 
It's not a curtain anymore. It's a chain. Yes. It's a terrorist network. Yes. So we need to prophesy. I command that chain to be broken, that network of terrorism to be broken. Just like God pulled down the iron curtain, he's able to pull down this chain, this network, in the name of Jesus and cause it to crumble and fall apart in the name of Jesus. Just take a moment and just, just pray. Just, just as you've prophesied, now pray. I just want to pray for the apostolic and prophetic ministries. I believe there's some apostles and prophets that have been caught up with so much noise, they haven't had time to hear God calling them up into the unknown. So I pray in the name of Jesus that every prisoner of the known oh God. that's listening to the sound of my voice be set free from the known from the chains of what they know and that they would be released just like the Apostle John was released to come up here and I will show you things that must come to pass come up here Mm. and I pray immediately that we go in the spirit and receive and release the lights and the perfections that God has for us in this hour in this day in this nation and in this world in Jesus name Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Jules. You know, we both have a have a common friend who breaks chains. Yes, he does. Uh, breaks chains, bends bars, uh, blows up hot water bottles, and he's still he's only 27. He's got a yeah, long time to go yet. But you know, one, one I've of I've been the, working <laughs> with him almost 20 years. Yeah, he's, he's, just, he's, he's been around since God was a teenager. Yeah. But he's no stranger to TBN. Would you warmly welcome Bill Henderson from Henderson Ministries International? <laughs> Come on, come on, Bill. Yes, Bill. Hallelujah. Bill, I, I know you, you just did a big 4th of the July thing with Dr. Jules, and, and we've got a member in our church who was with the WWF sledgehammer, yes, John. Sean Grove, and, John. and he comes home bloodied and beaten up and happy in Jesus. You take him out. He's normal when he leaves, but he comes back with black and blue marks. Oh, Bishop, I had such a great time. I said, I'm glad it was you. Better you than me. Yeah. What's up, man? God is... He's calling people to a place of intimacy. Yeah. This was one of the things I was able to share with Sean. When I had met him at your church when we were there ministering, uh, what was it, three years ago, Mm -hmm. the Lord speaks to me and says he wants to receive the Holy Spirit. And so I walked over to him and I said, you look like Steven Seagal. (laughs) And he does. (laughs) And uh, he says, everybody tells me that. And I said, well, the Lord tells me you want to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he goes, yeah, how would you know that? I said, well, I just was finished my prayer time, and he's speaking that to me. So I prayed with him, and he got filled. And then I began to, you know, we've been teaching evangelism for going on 26 years. I was and, right, you're 26 years old. Well, <laughs> saved, yeah. And my wife began to share with me, Marianne. She goes, the reason, Bill, that so many people don't want to get involved in soul winning is they don't pray as much as you do. And I began to see a theme in the Bible. And the Lord took me to Hosea 4.6. There it says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Now, I'm like you. I like to do word studies. And I went into the Hebrew. And the Hebrew says like this, people who used to produce are beginning to be made silent because they've gotten away from intimacy with God. And one time the Lord said it this way, into me you see. And God is calling his church to come to a place and thank God for people like Tommy Tenney and and strong teachers like yourself, Pastor Jules here. He's calling his church to not be in a place of busyness so much. And in that place of into me you see God. The Lord began to speak to me about he is raising up a radical remnant. And all I could hear in the spirit every time I prayed was the remnant, the remnant. And Romans says that, that then and now there is a remnant according to the election of grace. One day the Lord said, read the verse prior to that. It is those who have not bowed to Baal or have taken the time to break off idolatry. And let me simplify that. It's not a spooky thing. It's just God's calling his church back to where we spend more time with him. An idol is simply something, a person, a place, a thing that has taken time and preeminence over our prayer life and our time spent studying this Holy Word and reading the Bible and praying, especially in the Holy Spirit. 
And so I have been challenged by the Lord, especially in the last, since I met my wife about 10 years ago, to really go even deeper and deeper and deeper in study. Study is like the highest form of worship we can do. Because in study, we begin to know the depth and the width of our Creator. We know His attributes. And when people say, well, the Lord this, you've got to say no. Matter of fact, I have a word for the world. God is making the impossible possible. Joel 2.26 says He is dealing with us wondrously. We are in the second chapter, I believe, prophetically. Joel 2.26. And I had asked for that scripture here Hope I'm not going on too You're much, but great. let me just let me just. Go ahead. My wife and I just a few months ago were in California holding a revival at Assembly God Church, and I claimed that verse. I said, "Lord, let the impossible be possible in this service. Open the windows of heaven." Moses said, "I won't go unless you show me your glory." And the, if you study that, it means show me the next course of events before it happens. Show me now. Then I can go with confidence. And and long story short, there was an altar call. There was about. 50, 60 people standing there, and the Lord began to speak to me, Mark, about a black fella dressed like a biker, and another one over there, I don't know, 40 feet apart, and he looks like a doctor and a lawyer. And the Lord says, tell him, the biker, and tell him, the doctor or lawyer, to come stand together. And after the third time of the Lord speaking this to me, I finally said, you and you, come stand. And they did, and I said, do you know each other? And they they kind of didn't respond. And I says, well, God knows who you are. My wife and I began to minister them prophetically, shared with them their past, their present, and what God is getting ready to do in their future. Here's what happened. After that service, the, the T-Bear, the vice president, come up to me and he says, do you know us? And I said, God knows you. And he says, did you know that we are best friends, that you put us together? And that is the former president, and I'm the vice president formerly of the Chosen Few Outlaw Motorcycle Club. Oh, my. And I said, like I said, God knew that. I said, I can't say that I did. And he says, well, how did you, you know, you put us together. And it come to find out they were in a drug rehab program. And they went forward with eight others that they knew, not knowing why. This is why prophetic evangelism is so my, important. My. That showed them that God was real. And all I can tell you this right now, T-Bear and Doug are fired up for Jesus. They're watching tonight for California. Amen. There's, a man, there's a man sitting right there. You see this guy in the white pants waving yeah. and, and with the blue coat right there? That's Brother Bob Ecker. Fifteen years ago, he came to one of my meetings, and God had me point him out. And uh, I wouldn't do it as rough as I did back in those days. And I was kind of like John the Baptist in those days. You! <laughs> and God shows me that you were abused when you were, you know, at a certain age. And, and specifically what? And I didn't mean to embarrass him, but it did at that time. And he said no. And I said, don't lie to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and, and then he went, you're right. You know, and so, but now 15 years later, he works with our ministry. He lives in Colorado Springs. And oh, God has re-put awesome. us back together. I meet Pastor Jules on the, streets of Jamaica. on the streets of Jamaica. That's where we met. We both preaching on the streets of Jamaica. He was my, uh, I guess, my first mentor on the streets. We're working with Dave He's T. DeMola yeah. and his church, and we're taking some people out on the streets and teaching them evangelism. We bump into him on the beach, and it's like, what are you doing here? He says, well, God sent me here to learn street evangelism. Oh, my gosh. This guy really hears from God, you know. So we've been friends. How many years, Jules? Nineteen. Almost, almost twenty years. Almost now, twenty years. years. Awesome. But in yeah. that in that day, uh, I was assigned to him actually, and and we were going to go preach on the streets of Montego Bay, and it was packed. And uh, so when he, Bill had always had some bad experiences with preachers, with pastors preaching on the streets. They so I do come it. up to him. So I come up to him, and uh, the man introduced me and said. Uh, Brother Bill, this is Jules Bokeh, he's a pastor, and he's going to be assigned to you to preach. And Bill went, oh, great, a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, okay. So, so then, he, you know what a half-mile hailer is? It's a box about this big with a speaker, and you plug a microphone in, and it, and it literally projects a, a half a mile away. So he looked at me, and he was just kind of disgustedly shaking his head, and he says, okay. And he did it just like this. Do you think that you can take this half-mile hailer 
and put it on your head and when I'm preaching the gospel that you look this way and that way and this, do you think you can do that? And so I said, well, I think I can. And so we went out on the streets. I'm not as raw like as uh, we used to be. <laughs> and I was, I was wild. I was, I was wild. He was a lot harder than that. But tell him. Uh, we, we well, preached. finally, you know, he, 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 he finds another guy says, well, you and me are going to preach, and he's going to hold this on his head. So we're going down the street, and before you know it, Bill says, where's the guy? Where's the guy? I said, what guy? You know, and he's preaching, and I'm turning around. He said, don't aim that at me. <laughs> And uh, he said, where's the other guy that's supposed to preach? I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm doing left and right, you know. And he says, oh, great. I'm going to have to do this by myself. So he's going down the street, and he's preaching, and I'm moving. So finally, at some point, you go ahead and say the rest. At some point, you turn to me and said, well, it's just me well, and you. A, a Jamaica, man, you say no problem, but there's a big problem. Because Jamaica, man, you don't have Jesus. You need Jesus. We're preaching. We're like that. And then I said, now, would you like to try it? And he goes, and I'm thinking, yeah, well, we'll see. And I hand in the microphone, put this speaker on top of my head. This thing fucking <laughs> lit up. And he starts preaching like an evangelist. And I realized that because of the apostolic prophetic mantle on him, he put that hat on. And he preached up a storm. We preached our way all the way down later that day onto a beach. And you talk about prophetic evangelism. Oh, We're standing out there preaching to the Rastafarians. Wow. Gave an altar call. We went to a Rastafarian village. Got permission to go. And they all gather around. We're preaching the gospel to them. A whole bunch of them came forward, and I said, look, and oh, we're on the about, ocean. What you did is, I, and I'm preaching, the altar call's there, and he says, like John the Baptist, lo, water, <laughs> what doth prevent thee from being baptized? <laughs> That's what he said. So, <laughs> so we called him in, we called him into the baptism. If you, when you see his little role, and you're going to see, when, when we preach the gospel, we try to baptize him in water right yeah. then. Yeah, you know what? Let's, let's look at that role in real this quick. Is, this, is a role, this is a role in from the Freedom Festival, it, which is an outreach every summer. You do it every have. summer, yeah. Every summer. And it's a silent, so tell us what's going on. Well, let's basically, roll it'll show, it's, it's like we, God gave me an idea of doing a fair called the Freedom Festival. And we started this fair, and we preached to the, to the whole city. It's impact evangelism. 40,000 people came that year where this is being filmed. We do fireworks, oh, wow. we preach the gospel, we baptize, we preach. Uh, Bill's been coming now for 18, 19, it was 18 years we've oh, been doing it. Okay. You can see the crowds. And it is the largest event in our community. It's 100,000 population. And it's the largest event. We've had 40,000 people come over a period of three days. Oh, and God's really my. caused us to be able to impact with the gospel. But back, back to, quickly back to that story in Jamaica. Yeah. Jules stands there. We're baptizing we're people. Baptizing. And Jules we says... Have a, we have a, a, a bullhorn. And Jules says, somebody here, there's somebody here. You've come all the way to Jamaica to find God. Uh, all the way from America. Yeah, yeah. You, you come all the way to, to Jamaica to find God from America. And out from the rocks comes this guy... Amazing. He looks like the guy on uh, Home Alone, the big tall guy. Oh, with my the, goodness. He looks like, you know, and he's come walking over there, and he wants to testify. And he'd we, been sleeping on the rocks for three days. The Rastafarians were feeding him and stuff. And somebody told him, if you go to Jamaica, you'll find God. He ran out of money, and he was stuck. And there we were preaching the gospel. And so he was laying down on the beach. He had gone to a convention. He had spent all his money to come to this convention, the denominational convention. And when he got there, he didn't have the $25 fee. He said, no, I ran out of money just to get here. He said, well, if you can't give us the $25 fee, you can't come in. And he said, well, I guess God's not here. So he went to the beach, and for several days had been laying on the beach, and all of a sudden, I have this bullhorn, and we're baptizing people, and the Lord told me to tell, he said, look, there's, an, there's people from America here. So I said, God has sent you. I'm, I'm, I'm prophet, prophetically releasing. God has sent you all the way from America to come to Jamaica to find God. And God is telling you to come forward now. And he's hearing this. He's laying down like a half mile away. And, and he's hearing this voice on the wind. And I keep saying it. And so he gets up and he starts following this voice. And he sees us baptizing people. And I'm still saying it. And he comes in and he says, look, I, I want to give my life to Jesus. He gets saved. We baptize him. He comes out of the water and says, can I testify? And we looked at each other and said, oh, my God. And the first words out of his mouth, he says, my name is Adam. 
And I oh, said, wow. wouldn't that be like, like be, God? Yeah. And he says, I came all the way to Jamaica to find God. And I, and I finally found God. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Awesome. We have all kinds of stories like that. I've got, I probably have a couple of hundred stories on prophetic evangelism. I'm about to author my first book, which I'd like right. you to read it too, by the way. I'd love to read it. Cindy and Dutch and, and Jules and many great, Arthur Blessed, Nikki Cruz, a lot of people have read it and they've all given me a thumbs up on it. Should be out by the end of this year. Great. Cause it's final edit. What's the name of it? God's Radical Remnant. God's Radical Amen. Remnant. Yes. And it's, it'll be out real just as great. soon as I get it out. But many stories like this. Matthew 4.19, Jesus said, follow me and I'll make, and I'll you, make you fishers of men. And, and a study shows, means that if we're simply lean towards leaning somebody else to the Lord, that God himself ordains us. And then he uses our gifts, our talents, and our abilities. I did a survey, church to church to church, as my wife and I travel. And I said this, how many people got saved by a street preacher? I am one. A few hands go up. We did it in Jules' church. It's the same response everywhere. How many people got saved by television? More hands go up on TV than anything. Big crusade, a few hands go up. But how many people get saved through a family member? Now, I think my sister is watching from Colorado Springs. If it hadn't been for my sister, Carolyn, and her husband, Bob, and, of course, my mother, because my mom died in my arms in my early 20s from cancer. But they kept praying. And it turns, come to find out that statistically, there's 100 people a minute dying and going into a Christless eternity. We're the epistles. We're the live books of Acts that people are watching and reading and it's, there's 350 people that we, when we leave our door every day, we, we affect these people by our lifestyle. And so the power of evangelism is really in us getting so full of Jesus and, and getting to where the Spirit of God is just penetrating out of us that we become like a magnet. And through a family member or someone, a, a workplace or somebody close by, that's where most of the people are getting led to the Lord. Even people tell us, go turn on the television. I mean, my leg grew back in 1950. Hmm. I had a crippled leg and, and, and it was two inches short in a, in a hip socket that was 50% gone. I spent a year in the hospital and I'm watching television. All Roberts prayed and I put my hand on the TV like Benny Hinn says to do. And so, you know, God is using media. He's using, uh, but predominantly more than anything, he's using people that know people that are sharing what good things the Lord has done in their life. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe, I believe that's where the lights and the perfection come, because we are the lights of the world, and the, the, the uh, fivefold ministry causes the body to be perfected or matured. The lights and the perfection is when the body becomes so mature that they're able to bring people out of darkness, out of the world, because the church itself is living out of the world. I think right now God's calling the church to come across the line, get back out of the world and get back to intimacy yeah. with me. Let's join hands all across the audience, those of you at home, just stretch out your hands right now. Father, we thank you. Tonight we have heard a steady stream of revelation and insight about who you are, what you're about. And we've heard the invitation to get to know you more. Papa, I pray for the saints that are watching right now. I pray that as they bless what your spirit is doing, you would take them out of the known into the unknown. Yes. So that they would realize that when they're in the spirit, they know what they have never known yes. before. Father, I pray for those that are struggling right now with emotional disorders. Yes. Father, I pray your healing grace would begin to move. There's a woman watching. You have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but you've never had it in your family. And you are over 36 years old. There's never been any indication of it. And uh, they haven't given you medication yet because they want to do further tests. I'm telling you, my dear sister, they have diagnosed you wrongly. You went through a trauma in the last seven or eight months that left you feeling out of balance. God Almighty is going to deliver you from the spirit of infirmity and from the spirit of oppression. Within the next 14 days, everything's going to be back in balance. By the time you go back to the doctors at the end of the month, they're going to say, we must have not made the right diagnosis because the great physician is healing you right now. If you need to know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, call that number on the screen. 
have one of our prayer partners pray for you. Until next time, this is Dr. Mark thanking you for watching. And remember, you keep praising the Lord. Or small to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, right, TBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1P 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, follow Prayer Partner now and pray to see Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now, until next time, remember to praise the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.